after some of you guys go out and 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 I call this meeting of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees to order. Let the record show that a quorum of members is present, that this meeting has been duly called, and that notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code Chapter 551. The time is now 6.01. If you would, please stand with me as Mr. Husbands leads us in the invocation and Ms. Powell in the Pledges of Allegiance. Would you bow in prayer with me, please? Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, all the many blessings in it. Father, we ask uh, an extra measure of your comforting grace for our Navy family and the tragedy that's occurred in our in our wonderful land. Father, we ask that you bring a peace and a comfort that only you can bring to them. Father, we're thankful for our kids, for our teachers, for our staff, for our administration, and all that they are doing to accomplish a better community here. We thank each and every one of them for being here tonight. And we and we just thank you for allowing us to be a part of such a great community. Father, uh, be with us as we go forth in this meeting. Give us the wisdom, the discernment, make the correct decisions for our students and our staff. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Allegiance to the flag. United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Thank you, Mr. Husbands, and thank you, Ms. Powell. And thank you, students from Armstrong. That was awesome. That was we really appreciate y'all helping out tonight. All right. Item two, awards recognition, special district recognition, read for a better life initiative. Dr. Stockton. All right. Thank you, Mr. Sanders. Hi, guys. Hi. How you doing? Um, we're real excited about this night. We, we think that reading is the most important thing that our children do. And to take time out of a board meeting is really special for us because we have a lot of business to take care of in the district and the, the board appreciates um, the efforts of reading and talking about reading. So I'm gonna talk just about reading just about a, for a little bit and then, then I'm gonna read to the students and, and then we're gonna move on to something else. But reading we think is, is fundamentally important for every child. We believe very strongly that the more children read, the more they're gonna learn, and the more they're gonna open up opportunities in their life. And uh, you know, a lot of times when I walk into classes, I'll ask students, what do they wanna do when they grow up? And in fact, why don't I ask you, what do you wanna do when you grow up? Somebody raise your hand and I'll call you, what do you wanna do when you grow up? Paleontologist? Wow. What, do you, what would you like to do? A teacher, well I'll tell you what, now don't tell everybody that, but just call me, okay? Yes. A jeweler. These are very interesting occupations. Yes. Yeah, that's interesting. A doctor. Yes. A doctor. Yes. An artist. Great. Yes. A doctor. Yes. A veterinarian. Great. Yes. Army. Army. Great. Professionals. And what? And an engineer. There you go. Because if you were going to say special soccer player, that was it. I was going to talk to you about maybe some other options. You're going to be an engineer, then you've already got it covered. Um, but yes, did I miss you? An engineer too? You're just thinking about it, right? Well, the point is, you know what? You know how you become those things. You read and you read and you read and you learn. And it opens up those opportunities. So I encourage you to read as much as you can. Read for read for enjoyment. Read for uh, some of the things you're, you're supposed to read for school and 
make sure you just do as much reading as you can. And I also want to encourage um, parents, and we think that reading is critical, but a critical component of that is adult reading to children. We think that's very important. And parents, first of all, I want to thank you for being here tonight. Uh, your involvement means the world to the children, so we appreciate that. But we believe that adults should read to kids every, every day. In fact, if every child had an adult read to them 30 minutes a day, it would literally change the world. And think about that. Not only would kids have a love of learning instilled in them, they would appreciate learning. They'd read, learn to read and understand. But think about the bonds that would be made during that reading time. Think about 30 minutes a day with a child. Colin Powell had a quote I read years ago that uh, every child needs a laptop. Not a computer laptop, but a top of a lap for a child to sit in where parents can read to them. We think that's critical. So all the parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, whatever relationship, please consider reading to children every day because it's important. Tomorrow we kick off our Read for a Better Life program, and we're going to read throughout the district. And we read, don't panic, we read every day in our school district. We're going to really emphasize reading tomorrow, and we'll have guest readers come in and, uh, and read to the children and, and model that. So uh, we think we're very excited about that. I do want to recognize uh, our librarians in the back. The way we appreciate you being here and doing all that you do to put reading uh, first and foremost. Well, so we're excited. We have um, actually a, stu a group of students from Armstrong Elementary School, and we're excited that Mr. Lopez is the principal, and he's here tonight. Let's welcome Mr. Lopez. I've had the opportunity to visit Armstrong many times over the years, and, and when I'm there, almost every time I'm there, I go into Ms. Cross's classroom. I want to welcome Ms. Ashley Cross. If you'll stand, we'll give a She's an example of the great instructors we have in CISD, and she brings learning alive in her classroom. When you walk in, you end up leaving, um, humming some tune that the students are chanting, and they're learning something while they're doing it, they're having fun, and they're excited. When you walk in, they're so excited to show you what they've learned and share that with you, and that's what we want in our district. So thank you for that great job that you do. Okay, enough of me and, and a little bit more of you now. Students, I'm gonna ask Ms. Cross to line you up, and then I'm gonna ask you to come to the microphone, and say your name, and then come on over here and sit down in front of my chair, okay? Hi, my name is Alex, and I'm an, my name is Alex, and I'm, my name is Alex, and Alex Galicia, and I'm in third grade. All right. All right. All right. All right. Right there. My name is Chase, and I'm in third grade. Have a seat right here. Hi, my name is Tiffany Lozano, and I'm in third grade. Hi, my name is Mariah Norris, and I'm in third grade. Hello, my name is Aaliyah Ramirez, and I'm in third grade. Hi, my name is Hunter, and I'm in third grade. My name is Gavin Collier, and I'm in third grade. My name is Melissa and Vallejo, and I'm in third grade. My name is Brittany Velasquez, and I'm in third grade. <laughs> my name is Jacqueline Raymond, and I'm in third grade. <laughs> my name is Jasmine Gonzalez, and I'm in third grade. My name is Caitlin Juan, and I'm in third grade. Mm. Yeah, I just realized we have a bunch of space up here. Any of the children in the audience, please come up and join us. If you want to, come on, join us. Come on. Come on. You don't have to introduce yourself if you don't want to, but come on. <laughs> You're welcome to introduce yourself if you'd like everybody to know who you are. No, no. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Come on up and sit down right in front of me here. Anybody, any other takers? Okay. Kids, come on. Uh, come on a little bit closer to me. Hi, my name is Dallas Rainwater. I'm fourth. All right. <laughs> Hi, my name is Layla Enriquez, and I'm in fifth grade. 
Hi, my name is Benny Juan, and I'm in kindergarten. <laughs> Any adults care to join us? <laughs> <laughs> Only if I can say my name. Yeah. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. I've got. A, I'm real excited. I'm real excited because I've got a great book to read to you, and it's entitled "Born to Read." And I didn't write this book, although I wish I would mm. have. It was actually written by Judy Sierra. I'm going to read it to you now. I think you and the audience can follow along on the screen. In the town of Sunny Skies, a tiny baby blinked his eyes at dragons dancing overhead and letters painted on his bed. That's me, he thought. My name is Sam. I'm born to read. I know I am. Everybody see? <clears throat> Sam flashed his mom a hopeful look. She opened up a picture book, then another, then another, then another, then another. Such a perfect, patient mother. Sam became a reading star. He helped his papa drive the car. He helped his sisters do their chores. He helped himself at grocery stores. Once when Sam was almost four, his knees turned green, his thumbs got sore, his cheeks were flecked with yellow spots. They rushed him off to Dr. Potts, who cried, It's Martian mustardation. You will need an operation. Sam asked, Is that necessary? Let me see that dictionary. Here's a better diagnosis. Harmless preschool play doh <laughs> Sam read in bed and in the hall and in the tub and at the mall, he read while playing basketball. <clears throat> Passing by the pizza place, Sam cried, spied a poster, Cycle Race. Right away, his head was spinning, filled with thrilling dreams of winning. Sam read books on motivation, concentration, muscle action, getting traction, good nutrition, grand ambition, playing fair, and bike repair. <clears throat> on Saturday at half past nine, as Sam approached the starting line, all the racers roared with laughter. They would not be laughing after. Sam took off at lightning speed and sprinted to an early lead, uphill, downhill, like a rocket, stopping once to fix a sprocket. When the pack was lost from view, Sam paused to read a poem or two, popped a wheelie just for fun, and finished up as number one. Here's my secret, Sam decreed. Readers win and winners read. One dark December afternoon, the baby giant Grundaloon came slowly stomping through Sam's town. He turned the playground upside down, kicking buckets, squashing balls, grabbing teddy bears and dolls. And since he was a truck-sized lout, no grown-ups dared to call time out. <laughs> When Grundaloon had lurched away, the town folks cried, he's gone, hooray. But what if he comes back, Sam wondered. Think of all the things he plundered. <clears throat> Sam gathered picture books and snacks and traced the naughty giant's tracks around the lake across the bridge and found him resting on a ridge. Fee, fi, fo, fum, the giant said, I'll grind your books to make my bread. No, no, said Sam, have cake instead. Let's read about a silly cat, a caterpillar getting fat, an alphabet that climbs a tree, 
a friendly aardvark from TV. Grundaloon smiled sleepily. He sighed and sipped a cup of tea, and while the giant ate his snack up, Sam discreetly called for backup. <clears throat> Responding to Sam's SOS, a cargo jet from UPS transported Grundaloon Express back to his mommy, Giantess. Silly. <laughs> Sam hustled home with snacks of toys for all the waiting girls and boys. Then everyone began to sing, yes, readers can do anything. One point remains a mystery. Just what will Sam grow up to be? A baseball player, a city mayor, a firefighter, a mystery writer, a movie actor, a chiropractor, a statistician, a rock musician. Sam has not decided yet. Perhaps he'll be an astro vet with offices in outer space. Yes, readers can go any place. And that's the end. So, do you believe the readers can go any place? Well, I encourage you to read, and we have a lot of support. All the adults at the school are there to support you. So anytime you need anything, let them know. And work really hard and read a lot, because you're going to be very successful. And you know what else? I really appreciate you coming. That's a very special favor to me, and I appreciate that. So later on this year, if you'll let me know, I'll come back and read to your class again. Okay? All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Here. Guys, stand up, please. Come back around me this way, and we're going to get a picture taken that way. Okay? You all make me look good. Just squeeze in. <laughs> there you go. Tell you what, a couple of you, if you can sit down here. There you go. Perfect. Perfect. Perfect, right? Okay, there you go. Okay, we all ready? Okay. Go. Right. Five more seconds. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for all Yeah, parents, parents, you're welcome to leave. You don't have to stay for the rest of the board meeting unless you just like to. They might have homework. They have homework. They gotta read. That's right. They gotta go and read. By the time they take their bath and read for 30 minutes, it's good. Absolutely. All right. Thank you, Dr. Stockton. <clears throat> Next item on our agenda is uh, item 2B, citizens participation. Ms. Ferris, is anyone registered to address the board? All right. The next 30 minutes have been designated for public participation by patrons who have signed up to address the board in accordance with board policy BED. Please remember that the board may not discuss or act upon any issues that are not posted on our agenda. The board has adopted complaint procedures and policies that are designed to secure at the lowest administrative level a prompt and equitable resolution of complaints and concerns. These policies provide that if a resolution cannot be reached administratively, 
A person may appeal the administrative decision to the board as a properly posted agenda item. Copies of the district's complaint policies can be found on the district's website. Those who have registered to address the board will be limited to five minutes for their presentation. Delegations of five or more must appoint one representative to present their views to the board. Ms. Ferris, please call the first person who has signed up to address the board. Margie Popolinski. Good evening. I'm here to represent the librarians in Conroe ISD, and I just want to thank Dr. Stockton and his ongoing initiative for reading. The average kindergarten student today spends four hours engaged with an online device, whether it's an iPad, a television, a movie, gaming device. And um, if you're up for 12 hours a day and you spend four hours, <laughs> you're not engaged in reading. So it becomes more critical every day that we promote reading in our schools and we get kids to become readers. We all know that readers become leaders in our education. So we wanna thank Dr. Stockton again for this important initiative. We also wanna um, thank the board this year. We have a stipend for the very first time in my 12 years in the library to have a lead librarian we feel this is a very important initiative because we do have 58 libraries in our district and it does take a lot of coordination for 58 people. So we wanna thank the board for that initiative this year and Dr. Stockton as well. Um, and we appreciate that gesture very much. We also, I personally would like to thank the IT department here in Conroe. We are constantly integrating technology into the library and just in the last three days, we've had a major, major virus in our campus. When you don't realize how much you need technology until everything is shut down in front of you. So I wanna thank all the IT people that have been out to Colson Tough and that work day after day in our district to bring this the greatest and latest in technology. Our lives are to get in technology into the lives of kids and we have to integrate those things in along with our reading. So it is important for our students to have both. And um, we just wanna appreciate everyone in the IT department. That is a huge, huge undertaking for our district. A lot, a lot of effort goes into that on a daily basis. Um, I wanna present Dr. Stockton with a couple of books. I don't wanna have him be left out when he's reading in the district. And I do hope that when y'all make your school visits, you will come to the library and see what is going on in the library because we do interact with all the kids in our building. We teach a huge number of classes every week and um, we do want everyone to be a reader. So thank you so much, Dr. Stockton, on behalf of all the librarians. That was it, all right, thank you very much. Item three, consent agenda. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Not all those in favor and all those opposed. Motion carries. Item 4A, read for a better life resolution, Dr. Stockton. Dr. Hines, I'll ask you to come present that item. <clears throat> Good evening, Mr. Sam Sanders, members of the board, Dr. Stockton. Uh, again, it is certainly a, an honor and a privilege to present to you for your approval the resolution of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees for read, um, the Read for a Better Life uh, resolution. And as Dr. Stockton mentioned earlier, that free vocabulary reading is not only pleasurable, but it improves reading and writing and comprehension and vocabulary in our students, and it helps them to do better uh, academically. And we want to thank all of our librarians and teachers that are here tonight in support of this resolution. So I'll, I'll read this to you. Whereas the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees recognizes that being read to aloud is the single most important activity for children to build the knowledge required for their eventual success in reading. And whereas the Board of Trustees recognizes that success in reading is the gateway to success in other academic areas and Whereas the Board of Trustees recognizes that an individual's ability to read affects all aspects of their lives, the development of critical thinking and problem-solving skills, to gaining knowledge about the world in which we live, 
thus making them a valued and contributing member of society, it is therefore resolved that the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees proclaims that the staff of CISD will support Read for a Better Life and authorizes the district to enlist the support of the parents and community of CISD to read aloud to every student 30 minutes every day. All right, you've heard the resolution. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Any comment? Not all those in favor? That motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Dr. Sims. Thank you. Thank you. Next item on agenda is uh, 5A GMP Moorhead Junior High Tennis Courts. Uh, Excuse me, Foster, to come present that item. Mr. Foster. Good evening, President Sanders, Dr. Stockton, members of the board. Tonight I want to ask you to review uh, a GMP, a guaranteed maximum price uh, proposal to bring tennis courts to the Moorhead Junior High campus. <clears throat> Brookstone Construction is our construction manager for this project. They have advertised, they have uh, put together a GMP proposal to bring tennis courts to the campus at $483,521. Uh, these courts will be funded from the 2008 bond referendum funds, and I ask that you at this time approve, or our recommendation is that you approve this item. Motion. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All right. If not, all those in favor? All those opposed? The motion carries. Next item, 5B, bond referendum update. Dr. Foster, will you update us on what's going on in your world? Hmm. Again, President Sanders, Dr. Stockton, members of the board, i take this time, this opportunity to update you on the progress of our projects that are funded from the 2008 bond referendum. Currently active, we have Flex School number 14. This project is scheduled to open in August of 2014, so it'll be open for school next year. It is on schedule. It's approximately 55, uh, almost 60 percent complete. As you can see here, we're working the uh, building envelope around the front uh, portion of the building so you can see what the finished product is beginning to look like. Interior of this building, we have also begun some of the interior. Uh, you can see some of the interior colors coming together. Uh, you can see now they've painted door frames, started painting the interior walls. Uh, uh, what you're looking at is the base coat of the, of the block filling agent. Also, this gives you an idea of what the new library view will look like from the commons area, from the from the uh, stage area looking into the new library. So it'll be a, a more open, inviting atmosphere. At Flex School number 16, again, this project is uh, scheduled to open for August of next year. Uh, it is on schedule. It is approximately 50% complete. They are as well working on the building envelope. They're on the backside working around with the, the brick and the masonry work now. Uh, interior, uh, the brick and block work systems are going in place. Uh, as you can see, also, uh, they have a nice view of their library as well. Those are the active projects that are funded by the 2008 bond referendum. All right. Thank you, Mr. Would Paul. you share with uh, the board the schedule for the tennis courts? Yes, sir. The uh, the tennis courts in Moorhead Junior High, uh, with the, uh, the uh, passing of the motion tonight, uh, work should begin in earnest the first of next month and should be ready for tennis season. In the spring, so we're anticipating about a nine, ten week construction time. So we should be finished middle of January or so. They'll be oriented the way they have to be with the sun. Uh, I am, north, I am south, north, north, south, west. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, if you were to see them uh, on the plan, they don't line up with anything because they are oriented uh, for the optimum. There you go. Plan. There you go. Okay. That's that's good. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mr. Foster. All right. Next item on the agenda is six A. Authorization for payment of bills and investment activity, Dr. Cox. Mr. Cox, will you come present that item, please? President Sanders, members of the board, Dr. Stockton, I recommend that the Board of Trustees give authorization to the superintendent or his designee for the payment of bills and the related investment activity occurring from September 18, 2013 through September 16, 2014. This is an administrative item that we do each year. Correct. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Not all those in favor? All those opposed? Motion carries. 
Next is item 6B, resolutions approving investment policy and strategies, sources of instruction relating to investment responsibilities, and a list of qualified investment brokers. Dr. Cox. Mr. Cox, uh, recommend that the Board of Trustees adopt the three separate resolutions approving investment policy and strategies, sources of instruction relating to investment responsibilities, and a list of qualified investment brokers. Uh, the first one is the investment policy and strategies. Uh, this process was completed last week by the investment committee. We made one change to the investment policy, which was removal of the requirement to purchase CDs only from the current depository. I recommend that you approve the resolution. So we have a motion and a second to improve the investment policy and strategies. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? All right, and the motion carries. Uh, the second resolution is the sources of instruction related to investment responsibilities. So we made no changes in this uh, resolution from the prior. So move. We have a motion. Is there a second? second? And a second. All those are any discussion? Not all those in favor? All right. And now the third one. The third resolution is the list of qualified investment brokers. And again, we made no changes in this area. So move. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second. I'm going to excuse myself from the discussion since I have a conflict of interest as my employer is listed as one of those disqualified brokers. So, Mr. President, take over. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. All those opposed, like sign. Any abstention? I abstain. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Cox. All right, next item is item seven, executive session. No. Nope. We have item oh, I'm 6C. sorry. Thank you. Ms. Haynes. Financial reports is next, Dr. Stock. Mr. Rice, if you'll come present that item. I tried to leave you out there, and I apologize. Yeah. My fault. Still we can motion it. <laughs> Waving off. Karen, if anyone board object, we can bypass this. I, I'd, I'd, I'd also dispense with it. We've all read it. We've all had the financial statements. Give you the night off, as we say. Because you want the spotlight in. Is there any objection <laughs> from anyone? Is there any objection? If you'd like to see the dollar bills roll across, you can go ahead and put it on the last That's the point I really I look forward to each night, man. I mean, we've all read like it. like that last screen. You've seen it. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank for you, sir. Good job. <laughs> I apologize for making you walk all the way over there. All right, now item seven is executive session. Closed session of the board will now be held on matters contained in the notice for this meeting as authorized by sections 551.072 and 551.074 of the Texas Open Meetings Act. Should the board determine that any final action, final decision, or final vote be required with regard to any matter considered in such closed or executive meeting, or session, then such final action, final decision, or final vote shall be either this public meeting or upon the reconvening of this public meeting or at a subsequent public meeting of the board upon notice thereof as the board shall determine. The closed session of the board will now be held. The time is 634. <laughs> I'm not going there. It's like a the They give you no action. Be prepared, you know. I know. I'm waiting on the I'm not 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 I'm I'm not I'm not all right, the board is now in open session. The time is 6.52. The next item on the agenda 
is item eight, which would be action on executive session items, which there was none. So we will move on to item nine, legal, which is nominations for the 2014-2015 Montgomery County Central Appraisal District Board of Directors. Dr. Stockton. Mrs. Gladys, is I'll uh, let you uh, bring this item that you bring every two years. Every two years, yes, like clockwork. Um, it's that time of year for you guys to nominate, if you choose to, positions to the Montgomery County Central Appraisal District Board of Directors. I have spoke with um, uh, Mark Hesselschutz, office secretary today, who let me know that Mike Metter and Judge Sadler have already been nominated. Now, Judge Sadler is not the current member of the Appraisal District Board. He has been nominated. Biff Bacone, who is a current member, is already the nominee for the MUDs, and so he um, is have been nominated. And then a standing member of the board is J.R. Moore, who that we do not vote for. He's on the board at all times. So there are two, um, there are three members that are currently on the board who have not yet been nominated. Um, and that is uh, Ed Chance, Tom Fox, and John Wiesner. So you all are free to nominate anyone, but those are the ones that have not yet been nominated who are current members of the board. How many votes do we have? You have 1,779 votes, which you will pass in November. And how many does it take to guarantee an election? Well, it, you know, I, five people will be elected. And so, you know, the top five vote getters, and, you know, and that could break out a multitude of ways. There's 5,000 total votes to be divided up. Does that make so, sense? So 1,000 votes guarantee somebody a yes. victory? Yes. And usually you That's are. One way of looking at it. It is. It, it, but it usually takes a little less than that. Um, the MUDs will all cast their votes for Biff Picone. It's some unusual quirk in the way MUD voting takes place. So I don't know that their votes alone guarantee him. You have cast votes in the past for him to, just to get him over the top. Um, and then you've usually split your votes between two other people to ensure um, their, their spot on the board. But you're voting earlier than a lot of the jurors. Who, who serves who are the incumbents right now? The incumbents would be Tom Cox, John Wiesner, Ed Chance, Mike Metter, and Biff Pacone. Okay, five member board. It's really six. Jr. Jr. Yeah, yes. yeah that he's a standing okay. member. Yes. So, if I think I think two years ago, it was different four years ago, but two years ago we divided our votes in half and gave half to John and half to Tom. That could very well be. Is that, right. is that what you think? Because that what you remember? That's what I recall. The year before that, we had yeah. some preliminary numbers and we had, we could fill in the gaps. Yeah, yeah. we but did We don't two, have that. And then a well, third. Well, probably not because it all depends on when your board meeting falls. And our, our board meeting in December is after the time that we need to send, we have to have our votes in. So sometimes your board meeting falls right before or right like you know two days before and you know how the votes are and where you know who's all voted for what and you're the last to cast yours well i'm ashamed to say that i do not know do you know if everybody i mean obviously mike and barb serve i asked that question and their impression was no one has said they do not okay it was the answer i got how many can we nominate can nominate as many as you want. Or none at all. I'm, I'm personally comfortable staying out of the fray and dividing our votes between. You're not voting tonight. So all you're doing is saying who you tonight. want to be on the ballot. Nom this is only nominations for spots on the ballot. Well, this is just discussion, right? Then, Correct. Right? Yes. So, I mean, if we if we stayed out of the fray between the commissioners or soon to be post commissioners or whatever, and just divided our votes between Tom Cox and John Wiesner. Someone's going to have to nominate Tom Cox and John Wiesner. They are not nominated yet. Okay. So you all can do that tonight if that were is that what you chose to do. Yeah. And we'll come back in November. To check and then allocate votes. votes. Are we sure those two? Yes. Well, I mean, that's what she said. I mean, they haven't indicated that they did not. I know yeah. Tom Cox. <clears throat> all right. Is, are there any nominations? Let me raise the question. Certainly. I don't know. Uh, the Ed and A.W. both are all either. Judge Sadler has been on before. He hasn't been on in the last three or some more elections, been on the board. I'd like to recommend we just go ahead and nominate those three, and that'll give us an opportunity then. 
take a look between now and next, next time. What the allocation needs yeah. to be? I mean, different. How many, so, well, how many of those uh, groups make their vote? Are they? Probably not a lot. It's going to, you know, I don't know when, you know, there's, I don't know how many jurisdictions are uh, voting, 20, 25 jurisdictions. Who has the next biggest amount of votes? The county? Montgomery County. And, you know, they have meetings every week, so they may, I don't know if they'll cast early or late. I don't know what they're traditionally, what they traditionally do. How many votes do they have? I will tell you. Uh, yes, they, they have. They have just slightly less. Than what determines yeah. how many votes you have? Yeah, 1,096 mm -hmm. votes. 1,096. Yeah. So, 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 Dr. Brown, you're Absolutely. recommending, you're, you're talking about nominating Mr. Cox, Mr. Wiesner, and, and Mr. Chance. And Mr. Chance. Yeah. I'll make that a motion if okay. we're ready to second. nominate. Yeah. So we got a motion and a second. Datron, second. A second. All right, we have a motion and a second to nominate Tom Cox, Don Wiesner, and Ed Chance. Any discussion or comments? All right, all in favor? And opposed? Motion carries unanimously. All right, we have a motion to adjourn. Second. And a second. We're adjourned. Thank you, John. Ladies, you want to stay? Good job. Good job, Mr. Sandy. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you. You too. Appreciate you, Dan.